All right, everyone, I'm back once again with another KOF All-Star video, and this video is going to be a definitive, comprehensive battle card guide. We're going to go over what battle cards are, what they do, how to level them, and which ones to use or which ones to look for. So as always, I'm probably going to have timestamps as a table of contents down in the description. If you already know one thing or another, you can just use that and jump to uh, whatever part of the guide that you need. So let's start. What are battle cards? Well, basically, battle cards are the equipment in this type of game. Um, they provide a whole lot of stats, they have certain special effects, and sometimes they can unlock additional special moves. So uh, they're really important because, well, first of all, you have special cards which allow your character to unlock an additional special move. Uh, you have set cards which give you special effects in a set as well as additional stats, and you have option cards which give you, again, more stats and more special effects. Uh, one thing that they do is that they can add a ton of stats to your power. So, for example, right now, here's Lady Zero, right? With no cards whatsoever, her power level is at 14.8 thousand, right? So let's try and fully deck her out. So the Tekken set is one of the highest CP sets in the game. So if I equip that and I equip her special card, and now she has a fully loaded uh, set of cards, then her combat power jumps to 24,000. 800. So we get a 10,000 increase in combat power just for equipping uh, our full set of cards, right? So really important, provides a lot of power, and it's really good. Another thing that's really important about battle cards, which might even be more important than individual fighters, is that battle cards are transferable power. So let's say, for example, right, I was doing a, uh, I was doing a purple dungeon, right? So Yellow fighters are good against purple dungeons, so let's say I have my, I only have one set, I equip her with this full set, I put this on her, and boom, right? Now she has a much higher CP than her regular amount of CP, and she can do the dun dungeon just fine. Now we've cleared this purple dungeon, next thing we have to do is a green dungeon. Oh, well, you know, yellow type fighters are weak against green type fighters, but what, uh, what's good against green type fighters are red type fighters. So if we take a red type fighter like Angel, then we can just take the exact same cards, swap them over, and boom, now Angel is geared up and powered up and she can clear the green dungeon really easily, right? So I'm doing this with only one set of cards. So by transferring these set of cards around between different characters, I can selectively, you know, give a specific character a lot of power for a specific purpose, like for a specific dungeon or something, right? So yeah, there you go. That's why battle cards are important. Um, and again, you have special cards, which get unlock a special skill. You have your set cards and you have your option cards. All right, so now that we've gone over what battle cards are, let's start talking more about the specifics. So if you're on your homepage, you can access your battle card library from right here. And here you can see everything that you have. Now, uh, battle cards have several things going for them. They have their rarity, they have their battle card level, and they have the, their skill card level. So talking about rarity first, uh, rarity goes up to six stars. Usually you're going to be dealing with three star, four star, five star, and six star cards. Um, and each card can be evolved once. So a three star can go to a four star, four star can go to five star, five star can go to six star, and six stars are already maxed out. So if you look at this, you actually cannot evolve them. The way you evolve them is uh, you have to level up your card from zero to the max skill level. Uh, and then once that's done, uh, you can evolve it. The skill will reset, you'll get an extra star and your stats will go up. I will demonstrate this later on in the video uh, when leveling up a different card, but, um, now, where to get these materials to level up, uh, to evolve your cards? You go to Power Up Dungeon, and you go to here, the Battle Card Evolution Dungeon. And here you go, this is where you go, right? So uh, these yellow ones are for three star to four star, these red ones are for four star to five star, and then these fancy gold ones are for five star to six star, right? So there's two types. One is for set cards specifically, so these are used to evolve set cards. The other is for option cards, so these are used to evolve option cards. And yeah, so you basically can go over here and farm the materials used to evolve that, or you can go to the secret shop, and sometimes the secret shop will also have these materials for you. So you can just buy them, you don't have to spend your AP or your time, just spend a bit of gold, and you can just buy them straight from here, which is, uh, I think it's a pretty good deal, right? Saves you time, saves you AP, it's good. Okay, uh, now the other thing, two things to talk about, you have a card skill, you, sorry, you have a card level and you have a skill level. So the card level, with the rarity determines how many extra stats you get. So if we look at this card right here, 
Um, we get a CP of 567 out of it. This is a My Favorite Things Type 1 card. It's evolved, it's level maxed out, and this is how much CP we get from it, all right? 567. By comparison, if we look at a this card right here, it's the exact same card, My Favorite Things Type 1, but it's not leveled at all, it's not evolved, and you only get 208 CP out of it. So we get less than half CP from this completely unworked on card. Right? So the way you level this up is uh, you go under level up and then you use these materials, these Rubik's Cube looking things, and you know you drop a few of them into here. And yeah, you get experience that way. So uh, the card levels aren't very hard. As you can see, I have a ton of you know materials to work with. I think I get a lot of get a lot of them if you start grinding epic quests, you'll have more than enough of these. Um, but the harder part is leveling the skill level. So the skill level is something separate from the card level, and uh, I will have a section later on in the video explaining exactly how to level this up. But you do want to level this up. So for example, this one, completely unworked on, level one, you only get attack increase of 2.3%, but the maxed out card over here has an attack increase of 5%, so you definitely want to level that one up. All right? Um, now let's talk about different types of cards. So the special cards right here, they unlock an additional skill for your character, an additional finishing skill for your character. Uh, what you want to do is you want to look for the ones with this red marking right here. Uh, these cards specifically will do uh, only require three power gauges instead of five power gauges like most of the other special cards. So uh, generally those are a lot better than their five PG variants for, you know, because you can cast them more often. Okay. Next up, set cards. You generally want to have three matching cards of a set, obviously, uh, because once you do that, you're gonna get a special effect. So for example, this one, if you have three of the My Favorite Things that you activate this set bonus. So increases attack by 17.8% for five seconds upon landing a critical hit. That's pretty good, right? Uh, some other cards like, uh, let's say the Tekken set, increases critical rate by 10%, increases critical damage by 50%, blah, 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 right? These set effects are pretty good. So generally you want to try and match uh, three sets, three cards of the same set to get an additional set effect. And this is where a lot of power is. Finally, the option card, uh, ironically, not, ironically, despite being named an option card, you actually have the fewest kind of options here. Uh, generally you just want to run the cooldown reduction sets, but I'll go over that later, right? But um, Again, it's more cards that give you more stats and more special effects. And uh, later on in the video, I will go over in detail which ones you should be looking for and which ones you should use. All right. So now that that's done, uh, I'll be going on and talking about how to level these cards in just a second. All right. So let's start talking about leveling your card skill. Now, as shown before, leveling your card level is pretty easy. You just throw a bunch of Rubik's Cubes at it, and it'll go up. You don't have to think about it much. It's not hard. But leveling card skills is a little bit more tricky. So how do you level your cards? Well, let's go into our library, and let's pick out some random card. Uh, let's say this one right here. And let's say you want to increase our level from 5 to 6. Well, if you notice, as you start throwing extra cards in here, like, for example, if I start throwing cards in here, you have this right here, the skill level up chance. Now what happens is every time you enhance your cards, you get this skill level up chance listed right here. And the game is going to roll. And if you get a success, then your, then your card level goes up. If you don't get a success, then your card level stays the same. Fortunately, it doesn't go down or anything. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, what determines what this skill, up, skill level up percent actually is? Well, there's a multitude of factors. So the most important factor maybe the biggest one, is the current skill level of the card you're trying to upgrade right now. So for example, let's take a look at uh, this card right here, the Coolest Vacation Type 2. It has a skill level of 1. So if we go over here and we give it this card right here, this uh, yellow 4-star enhancement card, we have a skill up percent of 59.0%. However, if we go check out the previous card, this Terry card, and we give it one of these, we only get 18.9%. So as you can see, as the skill level increases, it becomes more difficult to get further uh, skill ups. All right, so the higher your skill level on your card, the more difficult it is, the less percentage you get out of uh, the same type of card. Okay, um, another thing that you get is if you match your, uh, your card type, you get a slight bonus. So for example, this one gets you 18.9%. It is a yellow card, so that's for sets. 
And if you try putting a card like this for option cards, you only get 15.7. So instead of 18.9, 15.7, just like that, right? So generally you should try to match your card types, although don't worry too much if you don't because it's not too big of a bonus if you don't have a match, all right? The next thing that counts is the rarity of the card. So um, let's just look at this one, right? So if I try giving this card a, let's say a three star card right here, I only get 8.7%. Now, if I try giving him a four star card like this one, I get 29.5%, right? So the increase in rarity uh, provided a pretty drastic increase in chance. Now, keep in mind that this increase in chance will also count if you evolve your card. So if you take a three star card and evolve it to a four star card, then it'll be calculated as if it was a four star card to begin with. This also works for going from four to five and it stops at five. There's no extra bonuses for getting a card up to six. Okay. Uh, and then finally, the last thing that matters is the skill level of the fodder card itself. So again, Here's a four star card with a level one skill. You get 29.5% skill up chance. And here is a level four card with a level two skill. You get 69.3% chance. So the chance of leveling up doubled just by increasing the skill level of the fodder card by one. So that's really important. And that's uh, one of the main ways that you're going to get skill up percent. All right, now you might think Oh, sorry, there's one last thing. Uh, duplicates will also give 100% chance of leveling up. So let's take, uh, let's see, let's take this Kula card right here, All right? Or actually, no, that's not necessarily a good idea. Uh, let's take some card down here, right? So this is a bronze card. If I try feeding it a different bronze card, I get 6.5% chance of enhancement, right? Not very good. But if I feed it, the same type of card, I get a 100% chance. So duplicates get you a 100% chance of getting a skill up. Uh, I'd only recommend using duplicates to level up four star or three star cards and not five star cards and up because, well, obviously it's a little more difficult to get your hands on these five and six star cards, right? Whereas four and three stars, it's really easy to get duplicates to level up, okay? Uh, and one last thing, now, you might have noticed that we have these enhancement cards right here. So we have uh, this one, this one, this one, right? And these are cards that are specifically made to provide skill up, skill up chance and nothing else. Now you might think, oh, then I should be using these as kind of like my main way of enhancing my cards. Yes and no, right? These aren't that common. They are kind of limited and there is a much, much easier way of leveling, leveling up your cards that I will show you in just a second. All right, so the basic gist of the technique that I just referenced before is you take your the copy duplicate copies of your fodder cards. So for example, all of these three stars and all of these four star cards, you stack them on top of each other, use them to level each other up using the duplicate mechanic to get a guaranteed skill ups, and then you evolve those cards. So now you have a high skill level evolved card that'll give you massive percentage gains on your skill level up. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, how do I know how much I need to level up a fodder card in order for it to be useful? So I'm gonna show you guys something really cool and that's the something really cool is this table right here. Now this table is your Bible, it is your gospel. Follow it closely and it will treat you well. Now, how do you read this table? Well, if you're using the same type of card, to level up the same type of card, then look at the left side of the chart. If you're using a different type of card, then look at the right side of the chart. So for example, if you're using a set card to level a set card, look at the left side. If you're using, I don't know, like an option card to level a special card or something, then use the right side. If it matches, use the left. If it doesn't match, use the right. Now, how do you actually read this? So the columns going up and down are going to be the skill level of the card that you're cur currently trying to enhance. So for example, if you're looking at a level eight card and trying to level up from, from eight to nine, then you should be looking at these two columns right here, level eight and uh, level eight on the left and level eight on the right. Now, the way you also read it is the rows going across are going to be the rarity and the skill level of the fodder card that you're trying to use. So if you look, at a five star card with a skill level of six should give an enhancement percent of 95.8, which is pretty massive, right? So uh, using that, it's pretty easy to get good skill up percentages. 
Okay, so we're going to be using this table in just a second to upgrade some cards, and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so the card that we're going to be leveling up to max is going to be this uh, Victory Party, Mr. Big Set card. It's currently at a level of 8, and we're going to get that to a level of 10. So, remember our table right here. So, we're going to be looking at these columns, these level 8 columns, and so... What you can do is you can uh, just pick out different numbers and add them up and try to get them as close to 100 as possible. If you're on the lower end of 100, then you have a chance of missing out. If you're on the higher end of 100, then you know that's you're, you're wasting efficiency, right? So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to get a five-star card with a skill level of six, and then give it uh, an enhancement, a three-star enhancement card of you know different types to kind of round it up, round it out, and get it to 100%. Right? So here we go. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to try and find something with six copies. So a four-star card with six copies. Let's see, where are we? Uh, this one right here. Alright, so I have six copies of this card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say use the same card, and it's going to do this. You can uh, use multiple copies at the same time, and it'll all count, right? So let's do that. And then what's going to happen is we have five copies here, so that's going to be five level ups, and we're going to go from one to six. Skip that. And there we go. You see, we're at level 6 right there. Now we want to get this to level 20 so we can start evolving it. So uh, let's just uh, use this. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, we're at level 20. Go ahead, hit evolve. And we now have a 5 star card with a skill level of 6, and that's going to give us some pretty massive gains. So let's go ahead and pull up our Mr. Big card right here. Level up. Find the card that we just evolved. Where is it? Uh, right here. And there you go. 95.8%, just according to the table. And then we're also going to throw some extra cards like that at there, and an easy 100%. I think we're just barely over 100%, so that's good. So let's uh, go ahead and throw some extra materials in there, and boom, just like that. And we are now at level 9, so now we're at level 9, uh, let's pull up our table again. Okay, and now that we're at level 9, we're going to be looking at these two columns right here, the level 9 columns. So. Looking at this, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get a 5-star card with a skill level of 5, and I'm going to throw two 5-star enhancement cards at it. And that is just going to add up to 108, 100.8%, right? So just barely over the 100% mark. Uh, really close, and we're keeping good efficiency. So let's go ahead and go back to here and take a look. Now, if you're ever short on uh, duplicates, there's something that you can do. So I know I have five duplicates right here, but let's say I wanted to use uh, these four duplicates right here, the Cosme set. What you can do is you can use some fodder cards to uh, level it up to from one to two. And then once it's at level two, then we use the same cards. And now it's gonna go from two to five. So even though we only have four copies of this card, we still got a skill level of five. I would only recommend doing this uh, on a 4-star card from 1 to 2, maybe 2 to 3, uh, because otherwise it's just more worth it just to use the enhancement cards as enhancement cards rather than use them to buff up a level for fodder cards. Uh, right? Like, look at the table, crunch the numbers, right? Um, the one benefit that you do get out of doing that is uh, you get to save some enhancement space because you can only use 6 cards to enhance at a time. Right, so maybe you can make the argument that uh, you save some space, but not really. Okay, so there we go. We got our card up to level 20, and now we hit Evolve. Boom, and now we have a 5-star card with a skill level of 5. There we go. Let's go back to our Mr. Big Set right here. And uh, go ahead and find the card that we just upgraded. Where are we? Right there, so 60%. Boom, 80.4, and then 100% just like that. Let's throw some extra materials on there. And... Voila! Alright, and there we go. Skill level 10. Without too much suffering, uh, pain, annoyances, or whatever, right? So there you go. I now just throw some extra Rubik's Cubes at it to max out the level. And now I have a fully maxed everything Mr. Big Set right there.
See? Blah, 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 blah. There you go. Alright, so that's a quick demonstration of the, te of the technique following the table, and hopefully you guys can make use of that as well. Alright, so the last part of this video is going to be some uh, quick recommendations on what cards you should be looking to get, which cards you should use, and uh, so on and so forth. So this first part is talking about specials. Now specials, eh, you don't have too much choice, right? Uh, it's going to be highly dependent on which character that you're using, because each character kind of has its own specific special. Um, however, what you should be looking for is uh, the ones with the red marker right here. So the red marker ones only cost three power gauges instead of five power gauges. So all these green cards uh, give specials that have a power gauge of five cost, but the red ones have a power gauge of three cost. And that's really important because the lower your gauge requirement, then you know the more you can cast it, the more it's up, the easier it is to cast, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you start talking about modes like Time Attack and Team Relay, where a lot of people depend on this power gauge, uh, depend on these finishing moves to stop the clock in order to get lower times or extend times, right? Like, it's really important if you have access to it more often. Uh, for example, like this Chizuru card right here, this is like, it's actually super important in Time Attack. It's one of the reasons that people are able to get times under one minute. Uh, if this card didn't exist and it didn't have 3 PG, time attacks under um, one minute would be much, much harder. All right, so that's the special cards, and then we're gonna be talking about the set cards next. All right, so talking about set cards, uh, we're gonna be going down the kind of the rarity ladder. So first talking about six star cards, on global right now, there's only one set, there's the Noah set. Uh, this is probably one of the, if not the strongest set in the game right now. Uh, it provides a massive amount of stats. Six star cards provide a massive amount of stats compared to uh, five star cards. Uh, you can see that in a second. And what this set does is it gives you a pretty significant amount of attack and also a chance to give you super armor when attacking. So it really allows you to keep the pressure on, especially in something like PvP, where, you know, if you're hitting them a lot and then suddenly you have super armor, like, the other guy can't really fight back, right? Now, there are three other sets that are available on uh, Japan, Japanese servers, um, and they feature the other characters of this Caliph All-Star thing. Um, so we don't have them right now, so I'm not going to talk about them too much in detail, but the Kaya set provides defense and provides a defense to attack conversion. So if you have a defense character with a lot of defense, you can convert all that into damage, and it's pretty good. All right, uh, the second set that we're also going to be talking about is the Ryugo set. Uh, it has a chance to guard break, so that's really good for live PvP. If you have a character with a lot of multi-hit, then uh, guarding against that character suddenly just doesn't become an option anymore. Because if they multi-hit, chances are one of those hits is going to break your guard and you're going to be screwed. I think uh, a character like Rimuru, she goes from C tier to S tier with a Ryugo set. It's pretty nuts. Uh, and finally, the last set, the Ein set, uh, I haven't looked in to too much of what it does, but I think it just gives a whole lot of penetration, as well as really high base stats like all the other six star stats. Uh, six star sets. I do believe there's another set coming. It's uh, It features Noah's buddy, um, but you know, that's new content. I'm not too familiar with that. All right, so moving on to five star sets. Uh, kind of the default best, quote unquote, best set to run for a while has been this set right here, the Kula My Favorite Things set. It's a pretty decent all-around set, and just gives you attack, has a pretty cool effect that gives you a lot of attack bonus when you crit, and you know, it's just all-around good. Uh, some other sets that are really good as kind of a default set, as an all-rounder set, is this Halloween Mary set. Um, time for a medical checkup. This provides, you know, a solid round, round of stat buffs, attack by 6%. Defense by 6%, HP by 6%, as well as a pretty big strike skill damage increase by 23%. So if, so if you have a character that has all strike attacks, like uh, Vanessa, I think, has all strike attacks, it, it's going to be, you know, pretty good. Um, and finally, the probably the best overall general just raw offensive stat in the game that's accessible is uh, this one right here, the Nest set. So it just gives... It just gives a massive amount of attack, right? 7, plus 7, plus 7, plus 12, and then also in PvP, decreases damage received from enemy with super armor and hyper armor by 50%. So um, it al allows you to run into those, you know, when you're just butting heads against two two characters with super armor, and uh, with this damage reduction, chances are you're going to come out on top. I use it on uh, Baseball Vanessa. It's pretty good. Okay. Um, so those are kind of just general good damage sets. Uh, now we're going to be talking about something a little more specific. Uh, crit chance sets, right? So the best crit chance set in the game is you can't get it anymore, right? It's this Tekken set right here. It gives it 
the set effect is a crit rate of 10%, which is pretty good. All right, uh, this also gives you additional power when you crit. So, you know, it free power, free damage, free crit. Well, not free, but you know, lots of power, lots of crit. It's it's really good. Unfortunately, since it's a collaboration set, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get it anymore. Um, the second best crit set in the game right here is the Wonderland set. So, increased attack by 5%, critical chance by 2%, critical damage by 12%, and you also get a critical rate of 8% in the uh, set effect. So this also gives a total of 10% crit. If you have a character that scales off crit really well or needs crits to work, then this is probably the set you should be aiming for. Um, aside from that, it's also kind of, in my opinion, uh, one of the more solid just offensive sets. And finally, we have two budget, not as good crit-based sets. We have this Chizuru set, gives some attack, gives some critical rate, gives some critical damage, as well as a little bit of bonus of a critical rate in the set effect. And we also have the Hydrant set. Where are we? This Hydrant set. Uh, it's not that great, but it gives like the most crit rate out of any, uh, I guess, Gen 1, Season 1 set. All right, so 2%, 2%, 2%. No attack, no critical damage, no nothing but it just gives more crit. And also, uh, whenever you use a basic attack, you have an extra 3.7% crit, right? I mean, it's, I'm gonna be real, it's not that great. Just uh, just, just try and go for this Wonderland set. All right, um, finally, we also have some more sets that are defense to offense conversion sets. So if we look at this one, right, the uh, Kula's Vacation, all these cards give defense and the set effect increases attack equal to 40% of defense. So this is kind of like the worst defense conversion set. The second best defense conversion set is the Mr. Big set. You get 7% instead of 5 or 6% defense on each card, and you get a conversion of 42% of your defense to attack, and you also get a bonus of recovering HP and gaining 3 power upon defeating an enemy. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Uh, now moving on to 4-star sets. There are some 4-star sets that are okay. Uh, this one right here, the Athena, is a the Athena concert set is basically a budget uh, Halloween Mary set. You have you know a bit of attack and a bit of additional strike damage when uh, when you do that, right? It's, it's basically a weaker version of the Halloween Mary set. And then uh, finally, this set right here, the Legendary Mindset set, is pretty good. Uh, you have you know general attack and you also get obtain 3.2 power when using a blast skill. So I have this on my uh, Athena in Wonderland right now. She gets a whole lot of power gain. And uh, she can spam a whole lot of her, a whole lot of her specials. It's uh, it's pretty all right. Um, everything else. Oh, this one right here, the uh, vacation set. This one has a pretty important set bonus. So you get increased gold gain by twelve point six percent. So uh, make sure you have three of these sets to put on a gold farming team, and uh, you know make monies. Uh, let's see. Did I did I forget anything? And I guess this one right here. Uh, this one provides the X a bit of crit rate and burn damage. It's not that great, but it's okay. Um, most other sets are kind of garbage and not useful. Oh, I forgot one thing. Uh, for time attack, there is one set that they, people use. It's this one, Sibling Training. And that's because of this bonus right here. Obtains 13.4 power at the start of the stage. This is a time attack specific thing, but I thought I'd mention it right here. All right, so that's basically all the set cards in the game talked about. Uh, there might be more coming and future content updates, but uh, for the most part, that's what's available now. Whew. All right, last part. Last thing we're going to be talking about is the option cards. I'm going to be real with you. Most of these cards suck. Like, 80% of these cards suck. They're all irrelevant, except for uh, two of them are going to be run on like 90% of the characters, and that's this one right here, the Maxima Strategic Retreat card and the uh, Kula and K unreal peace card and the reason for that this one right here decreases skill cooldown by 1.9 seconds uh, the problem is in this game is that cooldown reduction is just basically the strongest stat in the game right if you run two of these then your cooldowns get reduced by 3.8 seconds which is pretty pretty massive uh yeah and uh there is one other card that also gives some cooldown reduction uh right here the, what the rock is cooking uh but it only gives 1.2 instead of 1.9 but it does give an extra amount of attack and some chance to reflect damage right so it's a bit of a trade-off uh but for the most part 90 percent of the time you're just going to be running those two option cards there are some other kind of important cards uh so for example if you really want crit rate and you're looking at crit rate cards this one is the kind of the not freest non-seasonal card it gives you a crit rate chance of 2.8 the um what else is there uh, there is a Samurai Showdown card that has a crit rate of 
as well as you know some additional damage upon dealing a crit that's pretty good but uh kind of the best crit rate cards in the game are this tekken one it gives a critical rate of four percent when hp is 50 percent or more but you can't really get that anymore so the actual best crit card in the game is this one right here serving is miserable increases crit rate by four percent that's like the highest out of any singular card by quite a large margin and also an additional chance to deal chill damage extra chill damage upon getting a critical hit All right that's that's pretty good if you're looking for crits this one's your best bet um okay uh there are also some other cards that give you super armor when you're hit so the tekken card has a chance of getting super armor when you get attacked and also the uh my this one right here the original plan featuring Swimsuit Mai also has a chance of giving you super arm when you get attacked. So if you use this in PvP, uh, you know, it could help save you from some of your mistakes. Or if you use it in PvE, you know, same thing. It could help save you from some of your mistakes. Uh, some other cards that are kind of cool. The Bow card, where are we? Bow, has an increase of 14% to shock and chill damage, which is, you know, pretty, pretty big. Uh, as well as, you know, increasing attack when attacking shocked or chilled enemies. And also this baseball card right here uh, does the same thing except for bleed and poison. I don't think you can get this card anymore, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. You, you still can get this bow card, though. So it might be useful. Uh, especially in um, the super hard Chizuru dungeon. This might help you clear if you do a lot of damage. You might want to run this card plus the serving is miserable card. If you want to run those two cards together, it might be, might be good. Uh, let's see, what else did I have? Oh, this Halloween Hydrant set, this Halloween Hydrant card uh, is kind of unique in that it actually gives attack speed by 5%. That's, I think that's the only card in the game that gives 5%. Uh, attack speed is kind of a rare stat in this game. And uh, there are also some other cards uh, I have in my notes that says basic char attack charge rates increasing cards. We have uh, this Kula in the ice right here. It gives you 2%. This might be useful if uh, you know, you're trying to do team relay quest where you want your AI to build as much power as you can as they can to spam more uh, specials to stall the stall the clock right this one also gives you two percent it's not that much uh, but there's also let's see Yori rival which one's that sorry there's a lot of cards especially option cards oh this one right here this one also gives two percent it's whatever uh, and then this Valentine Chocolates one, I don't think you can get this one anymore, but this gives a pretty big 3.2%. And also the Slicing Buns from the Samurai Showdown collaboration also gives a charge rate of 3.2%. And the one that you can get, but only works on Athena, is this one right here. This Athena Strikes Back, you get this from the Admin Card Dungeon, and uh, it gives you 3.2%. All right, so that's basically it. The TLDR is just run double CDR and profit. Everything else is trash. All right, so that is my video. Uh, the comprehensive battle card guide for King of Fighters All-Star. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you like this content, please subscribe, drop a, li drop a like, comment, watch my other videos. You know, if I do get some more interaction, then I might be more motivated to, you know, actually make content. Um, I'm quite a lazy person, naturally. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it. Uh, again, you know, drop a like. Leave a comment, thumbs up, hope you guys enjoy, hope you guys level up your cards yourself, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.